All right, I intentionally got a later start than usual today because I love to fish a falling tide in the fall. And the tide here in the area I'm fishing was supposed to rise a little bit in the morning and then begin to fall. I've just checked a nearby buoy and it looks like it's kind of about peaking out right now. So it should be falling soon, but I might have a little bit of a dead period waiting for that tide to start moving. But I'm on the hunt for basically anything that'll bite. Definitely speckled trout, definitely redfish, and of course some largemouth bass. See if we get the trifecta. Now right now I'm just searching for fish. So I'm starting off with this spinner bait. Water's gorgeous. I mean, look at that. Look how pretty. So I feel confident throwing a lot of different types of baits today. If I can find water like this all day. But this spinner bait's such a good search bait. Just looking for a reaction strike with this dead tide. This of course is a gold H&H &H number four spinner with a shrimp creole matrix shad and a quarter ounce death grip jig head. One of my marsh staples fish it all the time and it's been particularly good this year and we had a little front come through the wind's blowing pretty good out of the north be battling that all day but the air definitely has a good feel to it all right i just stumbled on this it's a 14 and a half foot deep hole i just stopped to take a look and something's hitting some shrimp here a little bitty tiny shrimp so i'm gonna throw this tko under my verse max bolt pro series see if i can get one to bite All right, first cast, three hits. <laughs> it's an indication the fish might be the size of the shrimp. All right, I think our tide may have turned. I really have no idea. I don't know which way it should be going in this bayou. I'm hoping it has begun to fall. It's risen longer than I expected it to, and that's made the fishing pretty slow. You can see here, obviously some of that is wind pushed, but it does look like that tide's coming around that point pretty good. Looks like something we could throw a jig head on, try and catch some trout in that deep bend. Hopefully it's deep. Let's give it a whirl. I like sharp bends like this in bayous this time of year, but I greatly prefer to fish them against the current. And right now I'm fishing it with the current. Man, this just looks fishy. It really does. Nice little S turn here. No bites yet, but man, I just feel good about it. Let me explore this a little bit. All right, this is the same bend I pointed out, but now I'm on the other side of it. So I get to fish against the current, which I really prefer. Let's see what we got. Oh, there we go. There's a fish. There's a fish. Doesn't feel like a giant. Oh, it's a trout. It's a definite trout. And it's a keeper. All right. All right. That's a good start. I will right, we'll take him. About a 13, 14 inch fish. Man, you took it deep. That's a good sign. Making a mess in my boat. You can see there's a bunch of grass in here. Hopefully you can see that. So I've decided to maybe target bass a little bit, especially now that this tide has fallen. It's a great thing about being in the marsh. You just run across different things that fit different species, target them for a little bit and then switch back. I love dropping these soft plastics. Texas rigged next to these grass flats. As you can see, you'll have a flat here and then it just kind of drops off into the bayou. Those fish will just hang right along the edge, looking to feed. I typically really like the bends, but it's difficult to pass up these bends without targeting trout because they're also in the marsh this time. Of year. Oh, goodness. Oh, shoot. I got smoked. <laughs> you wrecked my worm. See if I can resurrect it. I don't know if it's going to hold together or not. Good to see the fish are hitting this because it is by far my favorite way to fish them. But man, it seems like I need to target trout in this little bend here. <laughs> An embarrassment of riches. I love it. Oh, you can see the remnants of this storm surge here. How it stripped out that marsh. Hopefully it comes back in the next few weeks before winter. Well, that might all be washed out by next spring. You know we're gonna have some hard cold fronts with lots of wind. This episode of Marshman Masson is brought to you by Publia Sporting Goods. Ooh. There's a fish. Oh, nice bass, nice bass. Boy, he smoke it. All right. <laughs> Boy, did he tag it. That was a good hit, really good hit. Not a big fish, but a 
He thought he was big. He acted big. He hit this Pro's Choice Senko style soft stick bait in June Bug. My favorite color. Also like black and blue. Good to see all those bass survived all these storm surges we had this year. Man, it's been crazy. <laughs> Past few years, they would have had that river to protect them, all that fresh water. But this year, the river has fallen. It fell right about on time, but it hasn't been high throughout all these storms. It's remarkable how resilient those bass are. Ooh. Oh, what are you? Oh, another bass. Oh, another bass. All right, all right, all right. Man, I just love it. I just love it. Cannot get enough of this. Getting lost in the marsh and exploring and seeing what you can find. Man, I just love it. There's one. Another bass. Another bass. <laughs> now that one I didn't even feel hit I just saw my line swimming off set the hook without ever feeling him they're all out of the same mold not big but very good to eat we will have a feast all right my bait is done got to replace it serve me well now see why those fish are here There's an absolute canyon right there that shoreline just drops straight down and you can see the currents coming through here probably hitting against that disorienting bait fish and the bass are taking advantage of it and this is why I make a point of fishing these falling tides this time of year. The fishing is just so much better. And look, I mean, today I'm catching a few bass. I could just as easily be catching a bunch of speckled trout and no bass. Or I could be catching reds and no bass or speckled trout. You just got to be versatile and catch whatever wants to hit. There he is. What are you, a red? I think you are a red. I think you are a redfish, first of the day. Oh yeah, pretty, pretty red. Good keeper size. Catching a smorgasbord. I'm gonna net you. If you're a regular viewer of this channel. You know what happened in my previous Pro TI? I was high sticking a red, trying to rush to get it in, and it snapped. It snapped in three, actually. So Lou's just replaced it. This is the first time I'm using my new one. So I don't want the same thing to happen. So I got my expandable Ego Net. Might as well put it to use, right? All right, all right, all right, all right. It's about a, I'm gonna say about a 20 incher. So that means we have hit the trifecta today. We've caught speckled trout, bass, and redfish all in the same area. Just incredible, man, I love it. This guy's gonna take a ride home. He's in that perfect grilling size. So we'll eat him for dinner. This is why I love a falling tide. It just, it's just so different. So different than a rise. The fish just get inspired. Everything's dumping out of the marsh. All the bait that grew up all summer gets sucked out. And the fish just go crazy. Love it. All right, got a little cut right here. Looks like the water's kind of coming through here. Our tide is really rolling now. So let's check it out and see if anybody's home here. All right, all right, all right. Another speck. I was actually retrieving my bait to make another cast when this fish hit. Which tells me I might be fishing a little bit slow. Might have to pick up the pace a little bit. Water temperature is really warm. It's in the upper 70s, so these fish are going to be very, very aggressive. They're not looking for anything that's moving slow. They want something moving fast, so I definitely need to pick up the pace. This fish told me a lot. This episode of Marshman Mass On is brought to you by Matrix Shad and by Seto New Orleans and by Plaquemines Parish and by Community Motors and by Delta Marina. Pretty, pretty bass. Look at this one. All right, all right, all right. All right. 
Now this will buy you a half fish before, and I came in here because it's got that same hard drop off like that previous bayou. So just trying to duplicate the pattern here. Made about three or four casts and caught that bass. That's a good omen. Now I'll take you through my whole setup. As I mentioned earlier, I'm fishing this Luz Pro TI. It's an expensive rod, it's not cheap, but it's really, really good. It's a very, very light rod. It's a medium heavy power. It's just my go-to for Texas rigging. And I've got it matched with the Luz Pro TI reel. Not an inexpensive reel either. This is by far my favorite combo. Fish this thing all day. Just don't get tired. Makes such a difference. And the rod is extremely sensitive. And of course, loaded on the reel, I got 30 pound Daiwa J braid, my favorite braid. If you're a regular viewer of the channel, you know I have a love-hate relationship with fluorocarbon. It has cost me many fish, but it has also gotten me more bites. I know that because of the low-vis nature of fluorocarbon. So I've kind of been going back and forth lately between mono and fluoro. And I decided just to beef up my fluoro. So on here, I've got 30 pound fluoro leader. Man, it's a pretty lengthy leader. It's probably about five feet long right now. You know how leaders are change baits a few times they get pretty short so far today I'm pretty happy with the with the 30 pound fluoro what are you oh redfish redfish Not a giant, but he is a keeper. Pretty sure he's a keeper. He's about 16 and a half, I'd say. Maybe 17. Let's see. Oh. Uh, he's about 16. I'm going to let him go. Don't want to chance it when I'm catching so many fish. Look at the teal. Goodness. Now that it's October and nobody can hunt them. There's a fish. There's a bass. All right, all right. Definitely the bait of the day. Believe me, I've tried a bunch of others. This is what they want today. We're getting quite a mess of fish, that's for sure. Now, if you've ever fished South Louisiana or you have any interest in fishing South Louisiana, you definitely want to stay tuned for the end of this video because you will get the hottest tip of the day, believe me. I'm seeing little crabs by the millions <laughs> coming through this bayou. I've been seeing them all day, but man, just a ton here. Now this tide is really moving out really quickly. You know, that's another thing that grows back in the marsh. It's not just the shrimp, it's these little crabs. And when you clean both these bass and redfish, and sometimes even the speckle trout, they'll just be full of little baby crabs. All right, this water is mixing up here, and this bend definitely makes it look like it's got a little bit of depth. It looks pretty trouty. So I'm gonna throw this TKO shrimp under my Versamax bolt and see what happens. Oh, there's a fish. Speckled trout. Speckled trout! You gonna make the cut? You're gonna be close. I'm betting yes, but I have been wrong once or twice today. Yeah, you're gonna make it for sure. Oh yeah, a 14 incher. All right, love it, love it. Bass, reds, and speckled trout all in the same bayous. Man, how can you not love this? Well, I've reached the end of this bayou, which means it's the end of my fishing trip, but it's not the end of this video. Check this out. All right, one of the things I really like about fishing in Plaquemines Parish are all the dining options. After all day's fishing, you really just want to stop somewhere and get something good to eat. And I pulled in here to one of my favorites, LA 23 Barbecue. It's just kind of a metal building with outside seating. Not the fanciest place, but I got to tell you, the food here is phenomenal. In fact, it's so good that every day they run out of food. Literally, they run out of food. So you never really know when they're going to close. Sometimes you get burned trying to stop here on the way home from a fishing trip and they're already out of food. But I'm a little bit early today. 
today, so I know they're gonna have some. My two favorite things are the pulled pork and also the smoked chicken. They're both phenomenal. Don't know what I'm gonna get today. It'll be one of those two though. So basically we're, we're about to pull a lot of stuff off. Wow. It's resting over here. We've got most of our brisket tops, a lot of our inside getting pre-ordered and you know it's it's pretty much organized chaos in here right now we're doing so much volume every day so i gotta ask you this yeah your pulled pork is so good how long do you cook your pork butts same time as the briskets everything goes over the same time we actually use this pit right here for pork butts and we cook them at 235 the same temperature we cook the briskets on and we do first peak at 6 a.m and you, you put them on the previous day yes yeah, so and they'll go on at 6 p.m and then we'll look at them at 6 a.m wow okay. and they gotta come off by seven to start cooking sausage on this pit Okay. About to check wow, look at that. Look at that. Um, what time are you open? 11? We open at 11 for lunch. We start being getting pretty busy right now. And then we open at 6 a.m. for breakfast. Okay. Which has been nuts so late. Has it? Dude, can't keep up with it. It's crazy, man. All right, I guess I better go get in line. <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> you got any whole chickens? All right, I need one whole chicken and one uh, pulled pork plate with uh, slaw and beans. Yes, sir. Thank you. Good time. Thank you. Appreciate Good. it. This is the key to sauce. It's so good. No place better.